Yeah, hello and welcome to another update video about um, Bitcoin. So we're gonna take a look at again the different scenarios here for Bitcoin in this in this video, just from a high level point of view, just to let you know which scenarios there are. Um, we'll start with the the bullish case, the bullish scenario, which I currently, well, I don't want to rule it out, but I won't um, focus on it until we break through the sort of 21.7 to 22k range because only really if we get above 21.7k, it will give us more promise um, for this particular bullish scenario. And the bullish scenario is just that here in June, we already marked the low. You know, you remember we talked about different indicators that the low could already be in. We don't want to rule it out. It's absolutely a possibility. Uh, it is not high confidence with Bitcoin just because the chart is still in a daily downtrend. But we had the hash ribbon indicator, the pike cycle bottom indicator. There's a few things um, that still show that that do so show some promise, but from the price action point of view, not enough yet for me to really confirm that, right? Um, and I did say that throughout here that I cannot confirm it. Yeah, at stages it was fairly likely that bottom was in, but I cannot confirm it yet. Uh, at the moment, it has actually only become the less likely scenario due to the price structure. And the view, however, would be that then in the bullish interpretation, this would be a wave one, can be counted like that, no problem. It's not a very reliable count because it is a leading diagonal, this wave one. So it's not an impulse, so it is rather unreliable actually. And then we would come down or we came down here in a wave two, bottom basically here in October. And the next move up would be in a wave three to the upside. That takes us to around 30K, actually a little bit lower than that. We'd be coming down in a four and move up in a five. Really a key level for this scenario really, really is the, let's say 25K level here, sort of in that range. Yeah, it's actually the wave one high at 24.6K and then this high at 25.2K, sort of around the 25K range. You know, when we break this and hold it, it will make the bullish case much, much more likely because you're just breaking above a structural level and above a level that would, you know, invalidate a whole series of bearish interpretations. Okay, but so this, this could be ongoing and by, with that interpretation, we would currently be in the third wave to the upside. Now, the other interpretation is that we have a very large triangle that the wave four, which I had here in August, yeah, that this wave four has never finished and that we're actually just moving sideways in a huge triangle, wave A, B, the wave C ongoing now, short-term upside potential still there. The wave D would be following down and the wave E up and then we come down and the wave four high would be where the wave E peaks. Now that's a scenario that would explain a lot more sideways action and that would also show us the potential to move sideways for many more weeks. Yeah, but there is short term upside potential. So again, we have a bullish scenario where there is short term upside potential and actually long term upside potential here in the triangle pattern is also short term upside potential. And if we wanted to formulate a target for that um, C wave here, we can do that by taking the length of the A wave, adding it to the low of the wave B, and that would take us to 22.9K for a wave C in Y of C, okay? And then we have the, that's currently still the primary expectation. Um, they are all, you know, none of them is so unlikely that I would rule it out. So we need to have an open mind with, mind with Bitcoin. Now the bearish interpretation would be that the wave four peaked here in August and we are coming down in a fifth wave. The fifth wave is an ABC pattern in this case, the way how the entire decline was counted, yeah? Um, and in this ABC wave, we already completed the wave A here on the 7th of September at around seven, no, at around 18K, 18 and a half. We then moved up in a B wave and we are now in the wave C. Now this um, C wave then, yeah, consists of five waves as it is a C wave, would come down, yeah, would be the last leg down of this move and could end the bear market low. And in this C wave, we've done here a wave one. So we came down here in September, middle of September, again to around 18.2K. 
And we then, we are now moving up in a wave two and we would come down in a three afterwards, a four up and a five down. That would be um, a scenario where I say, this is at the moment quite likely. This could stretch out all the way to, in this particular scenario, this could stretch out to 22.8K, but, but above 21.7K, it will already get less likely, which consequently means if we see this pattern work out and we push actually above the 21.7, 22K range, yeah, it's not exactly, you know, that's not one price level that I would give you, it's more a bit of a range, but it would increase the promise um, or the potential of the more bullish scenario. So we are approaching here soon a target range where we are going to possibly see a flip from a bearish into a bullish chart context, okay? So looking at this now in the short term, um, yeah, this move up, I, I, don't, I don't like this move to the upside, I'm very honest with you. That makes me doubt the uh, additional four and five that we will see here, but we talk about that in a minute. Um, my overall interpretation of this is still that this here was a wave one to the upside, a wave two down. We're now in the third wave that should take us into the region between 21,150 and 21,200, well, yeah, no, what did I say? 21,150 and 21,000, yeah, 800. Um, as per the Fibonacci extensions, then there should be one more wave four down and the wave five up. Now, I am a little bit doubtful because this move isn't really what you would wanna see in a wave three. It's a bit choppy, especially if it happens in the middle of this move. So, hmm. It is getting difficult, so I'm getting more and more doubtful, but I said it before, of this additional wave four down and wave five up, maybe we are not going to see this, and it's the same situation for Ethereum, yeah, that we do not see this additional four and five, and then we have only really three waves up. Um, we can still count it really, we can still count it as five. Um, I would need to rethink here sort of the, the lower level pattern, but it would still not be a very bullish case for this. Yeah, it would, it would more fit the assumption that we are still coming down here in a third wave as indicated on this chart actually. So this is not a very bullish behavior what we're seeing now. I'm still leaving at the moment this chart as it is. Yeah, we just need to observe it, need to be very watchful. Um, but what we are doing here indicates already a local top in place, to be honest. So the way this looks to me, and the, the sub, it's really not great, those subdivisions here, honestly, it is not great. Um, it's very tough to, to count this as a five wave move. I, I, honestly, I have a very hard time doing this. Um, We need to go to the lower level wave count. But do you see this? This is really, really messy, choppy. I mean, at the moment, I'm, I'm actually more in favor of the idea that this wave four is actually stretching out. Yeah, that we have here something like an A, B, and we would come down once more in a C, maybe in a running flat pattern, yeah. So we just need to be a bit open, but this certainly is not a good um, development. Um, what we need to do, if we have a, we, we can draw a trend line here. And this trend line, when we come down here, that would be a signal for me for another upcoming drop. And then it could very well be that this fourth wave was never finished. That is actually what I would prefer because, um, yeah, everything else, phew, I would really need to rethink how to, how to label all of this. Um, now, one of the best ways to possibly label this seriously would be to say, okay, maybe this was already the third wave here. This was the fourth or nah, this would fit better if I say this was the third, this was the fourth and the fifth. And I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to change this. I just want to show you really. Um, oops. Three, four, and then we had the five already in Bit like that yeah we had the five already in and then we already had the third in yeah 
and this was already the big fourth and we now so this is sort of the fifth which to be honest currently makes more sense to me because this could be nice you know a, an ending diagonal the way this is looking like so we need to have we have to have an open mind very clearly um the way this looks could indicate that this move is already over now i'm still going to move it back to the previous count after this video but this is something we need to have on the radar and that's always why i'm saying i usually like to take profits towards the end of wave three already because the wave three is usually the most bullish wave and um, you never know if really you're going to get another strong wave five so this is another way of counting this and it actually makes sense as well because you've got your wave one as a five wave move you've got your wave two then you have another one two three four five here in wave three you have four down you have a five up finishing off this third this was quite a way a deep wave four anyway so it kind of makes sense um and to be honest here we hit perfectly the 38.2 retracement so it kind of makes sense yeah, depending on what the price does now, I will make this my primary expectation maybe, but I'll leave it for now. Yeah, but there's something worth thinking about. And this could then get exhausted. We already made a higher high than the previous one. And this could already be a fifth wave. Um, and then we would be rolling over. But irrespective of anything, you know, um, you know my view of this chart that I'm not very convinced that I first want to see clear five wave pattern to the upside. I want to see if we break above the 21.7k level. And ultimately, the next decline is going to tell us everything. It's going to tell us everything. Um, if we're holding in the next decline, counting from or measuring from $18,200 to the high, wherever the high will be, maybe it's already in. Currently no evidence for that. Yeah, we're holding the trend line. I think as soon as you break below the trend line, it would be evidence we're coming down. And then if we lose the low at 19,974, that would be strong evidence we are really heading down already. And then we need to hold to maintain a bullish scenario. We need to hold the 18.8K level. If we're losing this, which is a 78.6 retrace, then it would be much more in line here with my bearish count. Yeah, and the assumption that we will make one more lower low for Bitcoin. So the next the next retracement will ultimately tell us everything. And we could be close. Um, the, the way this chart is developing now with the choppiness is not really good and is rather confirming or indicating um, an ending diagonal. But again, I will move it back to the chart how it was because there is currently no evidence that this uptrend is over. Um, so, you know, it's all about staying in the trend until the end and maintaining the current perspective until it changes. So this is a heads up. This is a warning that things could be coming down. Absolutely. Um, but it is not yet confirmed. Now, what we certainly can see, if I go to the one hour chart, we do see already a bearish divergence. Yeah, from here. Oops, no, where were we? From here to here. Yeah, we made a slightly higher high, but we made a lower high on the relative strength index. Same story on the four hour. So these are all warning signs that things could be changing already. Yeah. Okay. So that's my update about Bitcoin. I hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, please check out the channel membership. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.